Hi there. Today we're going to look at the June night sky. Now, it never gets really dark in June. We get what we call astronomical twilight because the sun sets at about 10 o'clock in the evening and it's rising again around 3, 4 o'clock in the morning. So when we talk about the morning sky and the evening sky, we're really talking about that period between 10 o'clock and midnight uh, and midnight and, and 3 a.m. Nevertheless, let's start by looking at what planets are around. Mercury is just visible in the evening sky, very low on the horizon, up until around the 11th of June. But again, uh, you've got to be up late to see it. Venus, which has been with us since uh, Christmas time, it has finally left our evening sky. However, it will reappear in the morning sky around about June the 13th. But it will be so close to the sun and it will rise in the morning twilight. It will be very difficult to observe. Mars still glowing orange red in the eastern morning skies but it again is low down and will be in the morning twilight and it will be there through most of the summer jupiter is dominating the morning skies it's nice and bright again fairly low on the horizon and likewise saturn is there as well as you can see on this image but they're all fairly low down and quite a lot of them are hidden or obscured by the morning twilight I'm starting to sound a bit like a TV astrologer, I'm sorry for that. But you can see the positions of the planets as I say on the chart. But if you want planets, they're all in the morning sky this month. Um, but you have to be up quite uh, early after midnight to see them. So now we're going to look at constellations. And this month, we're going to concentrate on the three constellations that contain stars that make up the Summer Triangle. In the Northern Hemisphere, we see parts of the Summer Triangle almost every night of the year but the whole triangle is in the sky pretty much from june till almost christmas but it's much easier to call it the summer triangle than the rising in june and setting it nearly christmas triangle seeing it in the summertime is the best time to see it because as night falls and again we only get astronomical twilight look eastwards for this great star pattern it's not a constellation as we say it's an asterism a pattern made from stars but not a true constellation the triangle is made up of the three brightest stars in Cygnus, Lyra and Aquila. They being Deneb in Cygnus, Vega in Lyra and Altair in Aquila. It's hard to convey how big the summer triangle is because it really dominates the summer sky. So at nightfall, look to the east and look for the brightest star you'll see and that'll be Vega. The brightest star in a very faint constellation of Lyra the Harp. To the lower left of Vega is another bright star, which is Deneb, the brightest of the constellation Cygnus, the Swan, sometimes called the Northern Cross, and the dimmest of the three stars of the triangle. And to the lower right of Vega is the triangle's second brightest star, which is Altair, the brightest star in the constellation of Aquila the Eagle. But these three stars are exceptionally bright and really dominate the eastern skies in early summer. Also, the triangle is a brilliant way to find the summer slightly dim Milky Way particularly as the summer goes through and if you're out on holiday and you're somewhere which is really nice and dark find the triangle and the milky way runs right through it in a way cygnus the swan flies along the milky river which then passes between altair and vega to the left of deneb in the milky way if you're looking directly overhead to the, the other side of the sky is cassiopeia but we'll look at that w or m uh, in the autumn when we look at the stars that make up uh, the story of perseus now, while the constellation of Lyra is hard to spot, Aquila and Cygnus are quite easy to see. But remember, the swan is flying. It has its wings outstretched. And sitting inside the constellation is the first X-ray object ever discovered. It was detected in 1964. It's generally thought to be a black hole, about 14 times the mass of the sun. Neutron stars generally have a mass of no greater than two solar masses with an event horizon around about 300 kilometers and it has a star which is the hot blue ob star hde 226868 orbiting it about every 132 hours and slowly falling into it as you can see in this artist's impression and to the left of x1 is the tulip nebula sh2 101 a region of dark dust and glowing gas not particularly no, not visible to the naked eye but quite a decent object through a telescope and to finish this month's roundup, because we haven't got a lot to say, because it's a short month in terms of nighttime sky, Cygnus X1, of course, was made famous to those non astronomers watching this video by the song by Rush off the album Farewell to Kings. Well, I hope you enjoyed this short look at what is a short nighttime sky. 
um, and will join us next month for July when the nights start to get a little bit longer. Yes, we're only a few weeks off the shortest uh, night and we start to see a few more stars uh, of summer starting to appear. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. Clear skies, stay safe, take care and uh, see you in a month's time for the July sky. Thank you for watching and please subscribe. Subscribing makes a big difference to me because it shows people are interested in the output that I'm making. Thanks again. Take care.